Should we start? Yes. Right, great. Thank you. A good evening, everybody. Welcome to this evening episode of Pursue, which is Pursue 5 Y. And this is Pathology of the Blood Vessels and Heart. And we are streaming live from Kolkata. And the topic of the day is very interesting vasculitis and vascular hyperreactivity. And to talk on that, we have Dr. Karnal Tanushri Mukherjee. She's an MBBS from GMC Bhopal, MD Path from AFMC Pune, DNB in Pathology, trained in Tata Memorial Hospital for two years. She's also a diplomat fellowship in the Royal College of London. Presently, she's a professor and senior advisor pathology and oncopathology in the famous command hospital, Eastern Command. She's also a recognized postgraduate teacher in the West Bengal University of Health Sciences a DNB teacher, an affiliate member of RC Path London, a life member of IAC and IAPM, with multiple national and international publications in peer-reviewed journal, best reviewer of MJFI 2019. She earlier was the HOD Command Hospital Chandi Mandir, Western Command. Before I ask ma'am to start, let me request everybody to keep their mic muted, their camera off, and please don't share your screen. With this, let me request, Madam, please share your screen and let's start. Thank you. Thank you so much. My screen is visible. Yeah, please make it full screen, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Is it okay? Absolutely oh, fine. Thank you so much. Thank you. So the topic is vasculitis and vascular reactivity, which is under the subheading of the pathology of the blood vessel. And this is a very important topic because you can get a full question on vasculitis or there could be slides. So each and every case here is very important. So I'll be covering all the individual cases as well as the classification and how do you approach vasculitis. So the introduction to vasculitis the etiology and pathogenesis and the classification types and then I will touch upon the vascular hyperreactivity in which mainly I will describe the Reynolds phenomenon. So vasculitis is a clinical pathological process characterized by inflammation and damage to the blood vessels which results in compromise of the vascular lumen resulting in ischemia. The involvement could be systemic or organ specific and small, medium and large size vessels, basically all caliber vessels may be affected. The main pathogenetic mechanism are immune mediated inflammation, anca mediated or direct invasion of vascular walls by infectious pathogens. So what vasculitis means to a pathologist and what it means to a rheumatologist because they have to treat and we have to diagnose. Rheumatologist says it is a clinical pathological process characterized by inflammatory destruction of blood vessels that results in occlusion or destruction of the vessel and ischemia of the tissue supplied by that vessel to systemic vascular type. And pathologist says inflammatory destruction of blood vessels, infiltration of vessel wall with inflammatory cells, leukocytoclastis, elastic membrane disruption, fibrinoid necrosis, resulting in ischemia, occlusion, thrombosis, aneurysm formation, rupture, and hemorrhage, which can be seen while we close the tissue. So basically we have to keep these things in mind because I will be describing subsequently 
how the organ involvement is seen in vascularity. So this is basically the broad classification, the International Chapel Hill Consensus Conference on the nomenclature of vascular types, the large vessel vascular types, the Tatayasus arthritis and giant cell arthritis, medium vessel vasculitis, polyarthritis nodosa, Kawasaki disease, then the small vessel vasculitis, the ANCA mediated or associated like the microscopic polyangitis, granulomatosis with polyangitis, earlier it was called as retinal, then eosinophilic granulomatosis was with polyangitis, Shustrop, then the immune complex mediated like the anti-glomular anti basement membrane disease, then the cryoglobulinic vasculitis, henoch shonlin and hypercomplementic articarial vasculitis. Then there are these variable vessel vasculitis like Bessus and Kogan syndrome, single organ vasculitis like the cutaneous leukocytoclastic, cutaneous arthritis, NGHS, PNS vasculitis, and isolated aortitis. Then vasculitis associated with systemic disease like lupus vasculitis, rheumatoid vasculitis, sarcoid associated. Then when there is certain etiologies like hepatitis C virus, B virus, syphilis associated, drug associated, neoplastic or cancer associated, radiation associated. So here we see the mechanism again, the large arteries may mostly the pathogenesis is T cell mediated, medium arteries, immune complex and antibody, and small and medium and small vessel vasculitis. Again with examples you see that small and medium size is antibody mediated, like the granulomatosis with polyangitis, shelf trot and microscopic polyangitis and small vessel vasculitis is immune complex mediated. So basically when you answer the question, you have to make a table like this to explain the pathogenesis and I will then discuss in detail the pathogenesis by touching all the individual vascular types. This is a nice depiction of the vessel involvement in which we see how the large vessel involvement is there in giant cells and Takaya shoots then the medium vessel vasculitis, and this immune complex mediated is polyarthritis nodosa, and anti-endothelial cell antibodies in Kawasaki's disease. Then you see the paucity of immune complex, often with ANCA mediation, it is microscopic polyangitis, then granulomatosis with polyangitis and Shustrop, and the immune complex mediated small vessel vasculitis like SLE, Hinoxonlin purpura, cryoglobulin vasculitis and good pastures. There are various clinical manifestations which can be seen as a symptoms of the vasculitis syndrome and like the large vessel vasculitis can present as a limb cordication, absence of pulses, aortic dilatation, asymmetric BP, like Kawasaki's disease, there is fever, conjunctivitis, cervical adenopathy, and polyarthritis nodosa can present with hypertension, testicular pain, depending upon the vessel involvement. Cutaneous polyarthritis nodosa with fever, subcutaneous nodules, myalgia, arthralgia. Then there can be nodules, ulcers, gangrene. Then Hinox Shonlen, there can be arthralgia, purpuras, bloody diarrhea, articarial vasculitis with articaria pruritus. Then microscopic polyangitis with pulmonary involvement, renal involvement, ANCA positive, granulomatous polyangitis with sinusitis, hemoptysis, then eosinophilic granulomatous polyangitis with neuropathy, asthma, eosinophilia. So this chart if you made with the clinical syndrome is very good. So after this we will see the approach to vasculitis. So basically we have seen the classification and you know the pattern of involvement. So now you first identify the vasculitis, then rule out the secondary causes, then you see the pattern of vessel involvement, what type of vessel is involved, 
the characteristic presentation of each vasculitis, diagnosis, how will you diagnose, and the treatment. So the common features of vasculitis, as I have said, in that flow chart, the palpable purpura, the pulmonary infiltrate, glomerulonephritis, which can present as a hematuria, then unexplained ischemic effects like myocardial infarction, stroke, Raynaud's phenomena, or a gangrene, or mesenteric ischemia. With all features, you have to keep in mind because it's a clinical pathological correlation. Then secondary causes could be infections, malignancies. So please rule out all these causes because vasculitis can occur as a secondary to all these causes. Amyloid, sarcoidosis is migraine, atheroembol or metabolic disease. And then the vessel involvement. So when you see all this, then you can make 2 plus 2, 4 and see ki what exactly is the cause and then you proceed further with the investigation. And the characteristic pattern, like again, it is like the age group affected, the gender affection, very important, like in large vessel vasculitis, you see there are two categories, mainly giant cell arthritis and tapayos. So giant cell, it affects, it's a granulomatous lesion affecting the iota. It involves a temporal artery, usually in patients older than 50 years and often associated with polymyalgia rheumatica. Then tapaya shows, usually in patients younger than 50 years. It also affects the iota and its major branches. So this is to summarize all the things in a table that I will describe in the individual sections of the um, vasculitis. So giant cell or temporal arthritis, chronic inflammatory disorder of large to small size arteries that principally affects arteries in the head, especially the temporal arteries, but also the vertebral and ophthalmic arteries. So this ophthalmic arterial involvement can lead abruptly to permanent blindness. So it is a medical emergency requiring prompt recognition and treatment. Elderly persons more than 50 years of age, they are affected. Symptoms are non-specific, headache, you can see elevated ESR. Blindness is the most serious complication. And there can be jaw claudication, scalp pain, scalp tenderness, polymyalgia rheumatica, different end of the spectrum of giant cell arthritis. So biopsy, temporal artery biopsy is done, often diagnostic in symptomatic cases, but a negative biopsy does not rule out the disease. So as per the American College of Rheumatology, more than three criteria gives a 90% chance of correct diagnosis, like age more than 50, new headache, temporal artery abnormality, ESR more than 50 mm per hour, and a positive temporal artery biopsy. So more than three criteria should be matched. What are the gross findings? The segmental involvement, raised irregular plaque-like in the artery with skip areas. Microscopically, intimal thickening, reduction of the luminal diameter, pan arthritis beginning in the media, the granulomatous inflammation, mononuclear infiltrate, and multinucleated giants. There is the infiltrate of T cells, CD4 and CD8, and macrophages. So, sometimes immunohistochemistry can also be done if there is of cells. So the T cell mediated immune response against handful of vessel wall antigens that drive subsequent pro-inflammatory cytokine production, particularly tumor necrosis factor. So the cellular immune etiology is supported by the characteristic granulomatous response, a correlation with MHC class 2 haplotype and a prompt therapeutic response to steroids. So the heel stage is marked by medial attenuation and scarring with intimal thickening with residual elastic tissue fragmentation and adventitial fibrosis. The next etiology is Takayashu's arthritis. It's a granulomatous vasculitis of medium and larger arteries. 
pulseless disease. Iota and its branches are involved and other arteries can also be involved. The vascular symptoms are reduced blood pressure, weak pulses, ocular symptoms like visual defects, retinal hemorrhage, blindness. There can be pulmonary hypertension, systemic hypertension and provocation of the limb. In 50% there is pulmonary vessel involvement. Grossly, irregular thickening of the involved artery with intimal wrinkling Extensive luminal narrowing and thrombi, fibrosis and thickening of the interior. See the microscopic photograph is destruction of media by mononuclear inflammation with giant cells, perivasa visora scaf cuffing of the lymphocytes, transmural inflammation. There can be intimal fibrosis, contraction, narrowing of the lumina, and thrombosis of base. Late stages is fibrosis without inflammation. So these were the two large vessel vasculitis, temporal arthritis and Takayashu arthritis. Then the medium vessel vasculitis, any size artery may be affected, inflammatory aneurysms and stenosis are common. First is the polyarthritis nodosa, necrotizing inflammation of medium and small size vascular vessels, typically spares the pulmonary vasculature most commonly renal and visceral vessels. 30 patients association, 30 percent patients associated with the chronic hepatitis B. It's an immune complex mediated and not associated with anchor. It is seen commonly in young adults, present with constitutional symptoms and organ ischemia. Isolated organs are also reported to be involved. This is the gross pathology, a segmental involvement with thin necrosed vessel walls and microscopic examination reveals the transmural inflammation, fibrinoid necrosis, fibrous thickening, pseudoaneurysm, thrombosis and hemorrhage are likely to occur. The second etiology is the Kawasaki disease, also called as acute febrile leukopitaneous lymph node syndrome. Described in the Japanese, but there is worldwide prevalence, self-limited illness of the infancy, may affect small and large arteries, often involves coronary arteries. There is a segmental erosive lesions, grossly, thin walls, aneurysm, rupture and thrombosis. Microscopically, there is segmental mural necrosis, fibrinoid necrosis, neutrophilic infiltrate, Lymphocyte dominance in the chronic lesions, intima is thickened causing luminal narrowing, and media and adventitia inflammation with necrotic depth. Another cause is the thromboangitis obliterate or the Burgess disease associated with smoking, more common in male gender, extremities often involved inflammation and thrombosis of small and medium sized vessels. The segmental occlusive inflammatory condition of arteries and vents, the thrombosis and recalidization. It is a non-atherosclerotic inflammatory diseases and exact etiology is unknown. The segmental acute and chronic inflammation and microscopically what you are seeing here Neutrophilic infiltration of both thrombus and vessel walls. Thrombus shows microapsis, central neutrophilic core surrounded by granulomatous inflammation. Fibrosis in late stages. Now the small vessel vasculitis, the anchor associated, microscopic polyangitis, and granulomatosis with polyangitis, which was earlier called as vector. And the immune complex vasculitis, which could be the anti-glomerular basement membrane, cryoglobulinic vasculitis, henoxtron lens, and the HUV. So microscopic polyangitis is a small vessel disease. There is a necrotizing vasculitis, necrotizing glomerulonephritis, and pulmonary capsulitis. 80% is associated with P and C. Sex 
marks the decade and no gender predilection, multi-system disease. There can be hematuria, proteinuria, purpura, hemoptysis, GI hemorrhage. Grossi, 2012. All the small vessels are affected microscopically. There is segmental fibrinoid necrosis, mural and perivascular neutrophilic infiltration with leukocytoplastic vasculitis. And there can be glomerulonephritis with fibrinoid necrosis, crescents, and alveolar capillaritis. This is a case 15 year male, chronic sinusitis and congestion. He coughed up blood, there's a hemoptysis and dyspnea. Young patient, granulomatosis with polyangitis. Earlier it was called as vaginal. Differential diagnosis could be a sarcoid, tuberculosis or a shirt straw. Mostly kidney and lung infected with granulomas in adults and kids. Initially with respiratory symptoms and then renal insufficiency. Diagnosis, clinical findings of sinusitis, pulmonary findings, CT scan is done to establish the diagnosis, biopsy in lung, granuloma with geographic patterns of central necrosis and accompanying vasculitis. Treatment, rapid therapy with steroids and cyclophosphamide. C and K is positive in 90% of cases of granulomatosis with polyangitis. As a triad of upper respiratory, lower respiratory, and renal involvement. So you see here, lungs has granulomas, is vasculitis, alveolitis, and there can be focal necrotizing glomerulonephritis with crescentic glomerulonephritis. This is a typical lung involvement, granulomatosis with polyangitis. Then short straws syndrome is a small vessel necrotizing vasculitis associated with asthma, allergic rhinitis, lung infiltrate. It's a multi-system disease with cutaneous GI tract, renal disease. Myocardial involvement may give rise to cardiomyopathy. Lung and extra pulmonary sites have prominent eosinophilic infiltrate. May have fibrin-rich edema, lymphocytes sarcoid-like granulomas. And as a Bessage disease, a small to medium vessel neutrophilic vasculitis presents as clinical triad of recurrent oral aphthous ulcers, sinitral ulcers, and uteitis. It is a variable vessel vasculitis, Bessage disease. Then infectious vasculitis, pseudomonas, then fungus, bacterial pneumonia, they can all precipitate. Then eosinophil rich granulomatous inflammation and necrotizing vasculitis associated with C anchor. In 70% of cases, they are associated with C anchor. Clinical features asthma, eosinophilia, peripheral neuropathy, pulmonary infiltrate. Histologically, it is similar to granulomatous polyangitis and microscopic polyangitis. There is a eosinophilic pneumonitis and a posse immune glomerulonephritis. Then henoch Schramlin purpura and a phylactoid purpura. There's a palpable purpura which can present with fever, polyarthralgia, increased ITA levels in the blood, typically involves skin, gut, kidney. There's a leukocytoclastic inflammation, grossly renal involvement, microscopically focal necrosis of the vessel wall, and IgA dominant immune deposits in the dermal vessels in a patient with Henoch Schonlin purpura. This is the immunofluorescence, very nice, seen Henoch Schonlin purpura, the IgA deposit. Then there can be the anti glomerular basement membrane disease. These are the immune complex deposits, cryoglobulinic vasculitis, hypocomplementemic articarial vasculitis, anti C1 key vasculitis. Then Kogan syndrome, ocular inflammatory lesions, inner air disease, arthritis, aortitis, aortic aneurysm, valvulitis. Vascular target is the small vessels of the anterior 
globe. When they can be single organ vasculitis and vasculitis associated with systemic disease like rheumatoid, hydralazine associated microscopic polyangiitis, hepatitis B associated polyarthritis nodosa, and HCV associated cryoglobulinic vasculitis. So you recognize the vasculitis, you rule out secondary vasculitis, there is a pattern of vessels involvement, remember the characteristic presentation, then diagnose and the principles of treatment. So you do a blood count, routine, urine, viral markers, radiology, immunofluorescence, ANCA and miscellaneous tests like biopsy, renal biopsy, skin biopsy, temporal artery biopsy, pulmonary tissue biopsy, upper airway biopsy, arteriographies, they are also diagnostic. Then C ANCA, P ANCA, and assess the immune mechanisms with various ANA, anti DNA, anti cardiolipin, complement, and cryoglobulins, RA factor. See here the C ANCA, finely granular staining of cytoplasm, and P ANCA with perinuclear staining, it's again immunofluorescence. Then you assess the organ damage by liver function, urinalysis, renal function. Principles of treatment, immunosuppression, secondary causes to be treated, monitor the drug toxicity, monitoring of the blood count, renal and hepatic parameters. Then I will just touch upon the vascular hyperreactivity and Renaud phenomena or the vasospasm. The chronic episodic attacks of digital ischemia provoked by exposure to cold or emotional stress is a pallor, cyanosis, and reward. Pallor is essential for diagnosis. Was first described by Maurice Renaud. There is loss of pulp of the digits here with pitting scars and ulceration. This is a severe Renaud phenomena. Allen and Brown established clinical criteria to distinguish innocent primary Renaud from secondary Renaud phenomena. So, there are many causes to establish the diagnosis, like primary Renaud, which is the Renaud disease, and secondary Renaud phenomena is the Renaud syndrome. Trauma or vibration, like reflex sympathetic dystrophy, vibration exposure, arteriovenous fistula, then interarterial drug administration, they can all be the causes. And I enumerate the various causes here, like the connective tissue disease and vasculitis, obstructive arterial disease, the neurological diseases, hematological causes, drugs, and the paraneoplastic syndrome, chronic renal failure, hypothyroidism, this can all precipitate Renault. Pathophysiology is not fully understood. But there is a hypothesis of a functional unit composed of vascular endothelial defects and there is an exaggerated response to cold and emotional stress and there is a polygenic phenomena involved. A genetic locus 3P21.1 and 21.3 has been identified. There is an aberrant expression of endogenous vasodilatory substance like nitric oxide, prostacycline, prostaglandin, and leukotriene, and vasoconstriction, WBC activation, decreased RBC deformability, and oxidative stress. And the intravascular defects include platelet activation, increased level of thromboxin and serotonin, and defective fibrinolysis with fibrin deposition and obstruction of the vasculature. So the disturbance in vascular homeostasis, it may lead to uncontrolled vasoconstriction and down-regulation of nitric oxide and up-regulation of endothelin 1 in Renaud phenomena patients. Age, usually under 40 years. Gender, female gender is commonly affected. It affects the hands and less often the feet. It is a common presenting system symptom of systemic sclerosis. So this has to be kept in mind and search for cryoglobulins and cold agglutinin should be made in a patient 
and then ANA anti centromere and anti SCL70 antibody should be done. Lab tests include the CBC, ESR, urine analysis, and ANAs, X ray checks, and again, as I said, complete evaluation to rule out any vasculitis. Then a nail fold capillary microscopy procedure to distinguish primary from secondary did not phenomena. So this is a basically vascular reactivity and this finishes off with the vasculitis and the vascular hyperreactivity. Any questions please? Just a minute ma'am, thank you so much. Just let me see the YouTube if there are any questions. Yeah, there are a lot of questions. Questions are there? Okay. Yeah, just a minute. I'll, I'll, I'll just read out one by one all of it. Please, just hold the line. Yes. Yeah, the first question, and in fact all the questions are by Dr. Pranab Kumar Bhattacharya. Did you classify vasculitis as per the ULAR and the press classification of vasculitis? No, I have done at the Chapel Consensus Conference, 2012. Right. right, correct. You can stop sharing, ma'am, so that we can see your, you know, we can see your okay. face then. Just stop presenting. Just press stop presenting. Yeah, fine. When Dr. Pranab Kumar Bracharya says, Taka Yusu's Arthritis is a disease of the aorta and its major branches. The disorder is large yes. vessel vasculitis of unknown origin that must often affect young women in the second and third decade. That's okay. Fine. That was already dealt. Temporal arthritis are not seen in the pediatric population of Taka Yasu arthritis. Okay. Yes. Pedi so these are Temporal comments. arthritis yes. again, it is a, yeah, again, it's a old age and I have said it is a male right. patient and more than 50 years of age group is affected. Right, right, absolutely right. Well, let me see, yes, there are some more. Temporal arthritis is not seen in the pediatric population of Taka Yasu arthritis, right? The most common childhood is the most common childhood, what is it, right, let me see. Yeah, classical children present with claudication, absent peripheral pulse, blood pressure, abnormality, strokes, and features of internal organ ischemia. Okay, the most common childhood medium vessel vasculitis is Kawasaki's disease. Yes, true. Necrotizing vasculitis. And they that has can, they can present with cardiac involvement also. Yeah, that's what he's trying to say, predilection yeah. of coronary oh. arteries. Right. Yeah. So these are mostly comments and, you know, uh, supplements to your talk rather than any question per se. Okay. I think it's a very nice talk which has covered almost every aspect of it to the extent which is required, especially, uh, you know, a good, good reference to immunofluorescence, which is very essential in many areas, right? Yes. Thank you so much, ma'am. See you tomorrow with you. vascular tumor. Vascular Is that tumor. right? Right. Take care. Bye-bye. Yes. Good night. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Yes. Please share the PDF, ma'am, please. Yeah, I will definitely. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.